What is a pandas series? What is a pandas data frame and how are the two related? These questions come up all the time from people who are new to pandas and in this video I'm going to try to explain it to you from the ground up. Let's start off with some definitions here. Okay, So what is a series? And then I'll demonstrate it. So a series is a one-dimensional, um, we can even say an array of data. Right, and so each value in a series has to be of the same type, known as a D type. And these are distinct from regular types that we know from Python. Okay, the values are numbered or the values are labeled, labeled using the index, which is zero, which starts at zero, like Python data structures by default, but can be different if we want. Okay, let's take a look then at series and then we'll move on to data frames. So I'm gonna start off by saying import pandas as PD and then from pandas import series and data frame because it's kind of convenient. And so now I'm gonna say S equals a series of 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And so I've created a series. We can see that it is one dimensional, right? It all in the line there. And now if I say, hey, pandas, show me what you got. So we see the series. It has the values that I gave to it, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. They're all the same type, which in this case is int 64, 64-bit 64 integers. And they are numbered with the index 0 through 4. Now we can change every single part of this except for the one-dimensional part. It is always going to be a one-dimensional sequence of data. So if I want, I can set a different D type, either sort of um, you know, implicitly or explicitly. What do I mean? I can say S equals a series of 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 0.5. And the moment that Panda sees that I have a floating point number there, it's gonna make the D type for the entire series float 64. What if I don't need 64 bit floats or integers for that matter? Right, I can set the D type explicitly with D type equals and then a D type name. So I can say, for example, S equals a series of 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And I'll say here D type equals, and we'll say int 8, 8 bit integers. And will that work? Absolutely, because none of these numbers goes outside the scope of an 8 bit integer. So I have 10 through 50, it's D, D type of int 8, all is good. But as I mentioned, I can also set the index to something else, basically any values I want. So I can say, for example, S equals a series of 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And then I can say the index equals a list of A, B, C, D, E. And sure enough, now my index contains not the integers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, but rather the letters A, B, C, D, E. And the index can contain you know, uh, strings that are longer than one character, right? So if I want, I can say S equals a series of 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And I can say your index equals, and I'll say here, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, split. A little weird, but there's no technical reason why I cannot do that. And there we go, this is my index. So I can really play with the D types, I can really play with the index as much as I want. And so long as I'm not violating any rule of how big the values are, and if the values are sort of you know legal, then pandas is totally fine with this in my series. Okay, how can I retrieve from a series? Well, I can use dot lock or dot I lock. I can say s dot lock of ghi, and then I will retrieve the value at index ghi, which is in this case 30. So it feels almost kind of like a Python dictionary, right? And I can say s dot I lock three, and this retrieves from the numeric position three. What's that going to be? Well, zero, one, two, three, that's gonna give me JKL40, so I can retrieve from there. We can even assign using s.lock and s.ilock, right? So I can say s.lock of GHI equals, and we'll say here like 999, well, actually, let's just make it 99 because, well, actually, I guess it is in 64, so that'll be fine. And sure enough, I've changed that. And I can say s.ilock of zero equals 888. And sure enough, that's fine too. And there's so many tricks you can play with .lock and .ilock. These are really like the workhorses of the pandas world. But 
This gives you a sense of what a series is. So that raises the question, well, what is a data frame then? If a series is this one dimensional thing, then what is a data frame? And data frames are two dimensional tables in pandas. The table or the data frame has an index just like the series index, which is zero through the length minus one. Put it back this way, even though it's a terrible way to write it by default, but can be set to anything you want. The column names are integers starting at zero by default, but you can set those too. The values can be any values you would have in a series. But here's the most important thing to understand. You should think of a data frame as a bunch of series. Each column in the data frame is a distinct series and thus has a different or can have a different D type. So let's take a look at this. If I say now DF equals a data frame, and I'm going to say here, like, you know, list of lists. This is the easiest way to do it 10, 20, 30. And I'll say then 40, 50, 60. And we'll say 70, 80, 90. And we'll say 100, 110, 120. Very exciting. And I have my data frame. And look at this. By default, we have the rows with an index and we have the columns. Well, those are the column names or numbers in this case. And if I want to, I can retrieve, I can say df.lock of one and that'll retrieve the row at one. But really and truly what we're doing then is cutting across a bunch of different series. Really and truly behind the scenes, column zero is a series, column one is a series, and column two is a series. How do I know this? Because if I want, I can say df dot lock of, let's say zero, zero, that's gonna be row zero, column zero, is going to be, we'll say here, 10.5. What happens then? Well, okay, besides giving me a warning, because you really shouldn't do this. But well, aside from that, what we see is that column zero is now turned into a D-type of float 64, whereas one and two remain in 64. I can even ask, I can say df.dtypes and get the D-type of each column and we see. And this is proof, despite the warning, this is proof that each and every column has a distinct D-type, which raises all sorts of issues moving along. So. I like to think of a data frame in many ways as a dictionary of series. That's not strictly true because just as the index can repeat, which is unlike a dictionary, the column names can repeat, although it's a really bad idea to do that. And so if you think in terms of one dimensional data series, two dimensional data, data frame, that's really what you need for the cornerstone of understanding and working with pandas. Everything else sits on top of that. I'll just address a few more points that people in my courses often ask. Number one, do we have higher dimensional values or higher dimensional data structures? Like we have 1D and 2D, do we have 3D stuff? And the answer is no. Um, pandas used to sort of kind of support something experimental known as panels. Those don't exist, they have not for a long time. Nowadays, if you want more than two dimensions, you have to use something known as a multi-index where the index along the rows or the columns along the columns can be multi-dimensional. And that gives you almost kind of multi-dimensional stuff. Another question people ask is, well, how does this relate to NumPy, right? They know that NumPy is providing us with these D types. They know that NumPy is related somehow. So my analogy is always has been for a long, long time that NumPy is sort of like the stick shift, the manual transmission and pandas is the automatic transmission that wraps itself around that. So under the hood, extending our car metaphor here, under the hood, you will find NumPy. And if I say here, hey, s dot values, tell me series, what are your values? Look at that, it gives me a NumPy array. And if I say df dot values, what does it give me? Again, a NumPy array. So all the storage and retrieval is being done in NumPy. That's why we have to use NumPy D types. Um, and that's actually leading to all sorts of possible changes or probable changes in the pandas world because numpy as amazing and wonderful as it is it isn't always the right fit and the best fit for data analysis with python uh, with pandas and that's why they're talking about something known as pi arrow but do not worry do not worry numpy is not going anywhere and it's going to be a few good years before we have to even think about this more than sort of an experimental context all right i think that's enough for this introductory video 
please let me know what are the questions you have, where are you confused, what do you want to know about Python and pandas. Don't forget, as they say, to like and subscribe, and I'll be back real soon with lots more about Python and pandas and everything in between. Thanks so much for watching.